is it possible to have two eureka server two eureka server yeah i think so yes yeah. port we can change 8761 instead of that we can have it on other port as well and then all the clients that is there eureka client so we can uh, combine we can have that uh, values as in the endpoint the on this also registered and also on that registered okay and what are the different annotations you have used in spring boot is the get mapping post mapping get mapping then you have like mostly all your mappings uh, and uh, then you have uh, the controllers uh, controller advices uh, etc and etc also like uh, saying beans and the, the normal annotation comes with spring okay what is the difference between stream and a parallel stream Parallel string, uh, which is here about the parallel starting method only. I don't know how, and what hour of this parallel string. Okay, no problem. So, what are the different ways to create a thread pool? One of the way I know is that uh, mostly with the executor, so you create a fixed pool, thread, a fixed uh, thread pool, or function thread pool, or placid thread pool. Executor ways means um, I'm only aware about that. Other than that. Uh, what so it means you if you write your own uh, implementation uh, probably i don't sure with that i'll be not sure will be that uh, yeah it's better you can use that in any case fix fix pool set is better with the number of profits defined the set pool so join uh, set pool is better so that your uh, set will not set the ideal and they can be utilized in security or any other operation they can uh, use that cassette set pool i think uh, it's cassette set set but i'm just not sure if the uh, cassette set pool uh, means it will obviously set the cassette but uh, what will happen or there are means other uh, Thread pool executor normally plainly also you could see it not exactly known the method. Then. And what type of design patterns you have used? The design pattern singleton externally not yet used because uh, like it's a framework related right. So singleton handled I know where and all used. And other than right delegate pattern it is for structure related pattern. So delegate pattern we are used. So delegate pattern is nothing but like a I'm I'm hitting on request right. Every request should go controller and service and repository. This is the flow. But I can, a few cases I can directly try from control to repository also. For example, I told, right, it's a persistent, right? So I need ID only, get all the uh, user IDs. Based on the ID, I can get all the data. So mm -hmm. from controller, I can, in controller easily, I can get the, all the thing, right? Find by, uh, find, uh, find all IDs, like, so by using the persistent method, I can get all the methods. But right now, we could not able to go do like that. In controller layer, I could not access the repository things. Everything go with the service and then interface of implementation, like that it will go. So I could not directly access the repository layer from anywhere. I need to go service, then only I can do it. So this is the uh, thing, flow, delegate. So what is microservice uh, in a simple way? Microservice in the sense, it is like uh, splitting up of application. Okay. So basically, uh, if we have a large number of application, large number of screens, so one is not uh, dependent to other, we can, we can able to split it in multiple ways. So one, one is down which does not affect the other one. If you want to change it, the change it some, let's say example, if you want to change some environment property of a, that relates to one particular screen. So the, we, we don't want to take that part and we can able to do it. This is a simple architect of microservice. Simply it should maintain the different uh, okay. tiny parts of a server. Uh, what are the benefits of using Spring MVP? First thing is it is giving us a framework here. First is dependency injection. Instead of we, you know, tightly coupling everything in our code, we are giving that responsibility back to the Spring container. So it will create the objects for us, and you know, whenever we require, it will get into the context, Spring context, and we can pull from there. It will act as an inversion of controllers. I mean, instead of we having the taking control of creating the objects, we are passing the responsibility to Spring. Then Spring is giving a lot of uh, you know support uh, around the development. We can go with the uh, EOPs are also there and Spring MVC. So if you are creating a strictly Spring MVC application, then it will help us to bind the JSPs and uh, data uh, model. So there Spring MVC help us. Do you know anything about caching? Well, caching is means to just store your data. Like take an example, okay? Just store your data in a cache, cache like that. Yeah, you can yeah. use that cache. What is the benefit of having data in the cache? In the case of Hibernate, it's like the if you if you use a there is save method like okay. If you have cache, how you will get data in in the case of Hibernate? You will get the data from the database, right? So you will yes. So your code will connect to the database, 
and then it will fetch the data from the data yeah. so connecting to the database and then fetching like executing the query then fetching the data then giving back to you this whole process take a lot of memory what we do we use cache uh, in the case of cache what you will do so first time you fetch something you fetch the list of students from your code yeah. so again yeah. if you yeah, need that like list this. again if you need that list you don't go to the database again you have the data yes. in your cache and if you have the data in your cache give that data back to the user you don't go to the database again you don't create the connection again and then execute the query again and then pass the data from the database again so it will save a lot of memory so that's why we use cache so there are two types of cache first level cache and second level cache so first yes. level cache is oh. by default provided by hibernate you don't need to do anything about for that okay and second level cache is it's not provided by hibernate i mean you need to add some libraries and something you need to do in your code adding those libraries and manual configuration has been done so then it will be activated so it will be a uh, session level cache cache session yeah. level cache means it will be shared the data will be shared by all the sessions so earlier the first level cache was only the session level and then the second level was shared by all the sessions if you create another session that will also have the data. if you are using second level cache then that will also have that data which you fetched earlier okay and suppose if you have both application property and yaml mm -hmm. file in your application so from which file uh, your application will read the uh, config i think from both yeah. From both the uh, it reads because I had a place where I used the YAML also and property file also. Yeah. So it was reading from if I'm defining it through application dot properties also at the rate value and anything that we are putting. So it is reading from there also. Then we are putting it through this uh, YAML also. Then also it is reading. Yeah. Okay. So what are the lambdas? Yeah, lambda is uh, nothing but make. It will make the functional interface calling easy, right? Using Lambda, so automatically it create the implementer for our functional interface. Let's say uh, like a runnable interface we have, like it has only one method run, right? Okay. So using Lambda, we don't need to write full code for our. So Lambda makes the functional interface implementation easy. Are you writing test cases for your code? Yes, basic functionality we are writing, and uh, no, for normal uh, functions which are not dependent on you know other things, purely logic kind of thing. So that we are doing more often. And for one or two scenarios, we have used mock to mock the uh, DAO layer to uh, test the service functionality. So can you tell me about factory how it works? So factory is like, I mean, we, let's say there's a parent and uh, there are two or three multiple, you know, multiple inheriting, sorry, extending objects are there, sorry, extending classes. And we, during the, you know, prior itself, we don't know which particular uh, object has to be created. So for that purpose, we will create a factory. We will pass the type of the, you know, class. Let's say we will give a class name there. And within the factory method, the get instance method, we can define our logic like whatever, let's say, compare it with the type. And if the type is A, then create an object of uh, a class and return it and uh, share it in the parent reference or if the type is b like the uh, user is expecting a b type of class then we'll create a b class we'll in, uh, create an object of b class and then return into the reference of uh, you know, parent one so the parent will be same we just have to pass the type of object we need internally that will create the object and return it back instead of we creating the new the factory will create it and give it back so suppose in my program i don't uh, import the java dot length package so what will happen in that case it will uh... I mean, it, it will uh, show the compile error or want to, they, they will uh, post to the import or the, the specific uh, library on the class file. But uh, are you sure about that? Because uh, am I right? Java uh, dot length package will be imported by default. If you don't write it, it will be imported. Uh, actually, actually the, the object, the main class where uh, we can say the contain the this package so i don't think so i mean if it is uh, not important in built it's important so we explicitly we don't have to do it there is a thing called service layer so what is the purpose of having service layer okay service layer is like uh, performing our business logic on whatever the data we get from the repository layer. so repository so let's say we have divided the entire flow of you know backend an api into three sections the controller layer service layer 
here and the repository. So repository is strictly bound only to get the data or push the data to database. Similarly, the controller is only you know allowed to you know get the request or send the request back to the HTTP or any format changes but the actual business logic is something which has to be implemented in the service class etc so for that purpose we use service. what is the practical use of default method in java default methods uh, are mainly came into picture for solving the limitation of interfaces and also for adding more functionality methods in interface without breaking the implementation classes functionality so suppose uh, there is one interface um, in that interface um, you have implemented one method and that interface is implemented by two other classes you have also declared one uh, method in that interface but there is no implementation in both other classes which is uh, using Im implementing the interface then we will get uh, an error right a compiled time error but instead of using default uh, method in that interface will not be able to get the class which is, which is requiring this method the default method can can be overridden and uh, in terms of like uh, you have already written a code and then you need to add some methods in some interfaces there you can mm -hmm. add default methods yeah without uh, breaking the fun existing functionality so you don't yeah need without to breaking the existing functionality yeah so your already written methods does not need to require override the, those 